Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for general information and educational purposes only. Students should test cybersecurity techniques in the secured lab setup. I do not take any responsibility, and I am not liable for any damage or problem caused while implementing the tools and technique. Hi! Welcome back to another episode of the Ethical Hacking series. I'd like to show and give you an overview of the Linux terminal. A terminal is a place where you can basically do anything you want on the operating system. You can run any program you want on the operating system by running the commands that are associated with the action that you want to do. The Linux terminal is very very powerful, it basically allows you to do so much more than the graphical interface of all the programs that we are going to use have graphical interfaces. But the command line is just so much easier and so much quicker. In many scenarios that you will face in the future, you might just get an SSH or a command prompt on the target computer, therefore you need to know the commands in order to be able to do whatever you want to do on a computer or to pen test its security. So learning the command prompt, learning how to deal with the command prompt is very important. We are going to use a lot through the series. For now, I'm just going to give you a very simple overview, as we use it I'll be talking about more of the features. It's just going to become so much easier for you, you're going to love it. It's going to be so much easier than running through the graphical interfaces. So it is very simple, you literally type in the command and the result is displayed on screen as text. Let's have a look on a very very simple command, the command is called ls, what this command does it lists all the files and directories that exist in the current working directory. It's similar to dir command in Windows machines, literally just lists all the files and directories that exist in the current directory. As we can see, the files and directories that we have now are desktop, documents, downloads, music, whatever. Now, before I just go more into detail of other commands, one of the very important commands that's going to become so handy to you in the future is the man command. Man stand for manual, the man command can be used to clearly and get the manual of any other command. For example, we just use the ls command to list all the directories that exist in the current working directory. Now let's do man and then type in ls after that, this will show us the manual for the ls command. As you can see that, it's telling us that the ls is used to list contents because it lists files and directories. We can see that this command actually takes options, you can see the format of the options it's either a minus letter abbreviation or minus minus and you type in the full option for example in here. Right here, we can see what this option does. For example, the all option it does not ignore our entries and starting with the dot. If you type in on enter, the manual will just keep going down so you can read more stuff. As you can see, these are all the options that you can do with the command. For example here, the minus L uses long listing format. So let's quit this, to quit this you just type in Q and we're out, so we're out of the manual for the LS. Let's run LS with some options, so I'm going to LS and then I'm gonna do minus L and that's the one that will show us more information about it. It's basically the same command that we run before but as you can see now we got more information, we see in the total entities that exist in the current working directory. We can see the same directories that we seen before right here. We can also see the dates that they were created or modified, we can see the user who is responsible for them and it's the root user. We can also see the permissions on these, now we're going to talk on permissions in the future as well. Basically, permissions specify which users can do what, so they go in into read write execute write execute. You don't really need to worry about them now, we'll talk about them more in the future. This is just an example of the ls command. Now, all of these commands are not hacking commands. They're not penetration testing commands, they're just commands used in Linux that allow us to do different things on the operating system. Now you can do the penetration commands and we're going to do them in the future. They're literally just running programs on the operating system. Another really useful option is the minus minus help. So I'm going to do ls again and do a minus minus help. Now, the man and the minus minus help work on almost every command. 
So you can do man ls or ls minus minus help. It will always show you help or the manual page of the program. So right here we can see this is the help page of using the ls. It tells you all the options again of the ls command. So again it's a minus or minus minus and then you put the option name as we did before and on top. It shows you information about what the command does and it gives you the format of the command. It should be used in this particular format usage ls and then you put the options and then if you want to do anything to our file. So it's very similar to the man command. Sometimes some programs will not have the man, they'll just have the help. So if you have any command, if you have any program that you're not sure on how to use, you can always just type in man, the name of the command, or the minus minus help. Another useful thing with dealing with terminal, you can press the up and down arrows to go through the history of the command. As you can see, I'm switching between the commands that I ran. I ran man ls, I'm on lsl, I'm on ls minus minus help. So I can switch between the commands through the up and down. Another useful thing is the tab, the tab button on the keyboard. So if you're typing a command or if you're looking for a file and you're just not sure, for example, let's say I want to type my file name. Let's first make a file so I'm just going to go to places, home and now we're here in this particular place, I'm going to create a new folder. So let's say I'm looking to do something with test. I'm looking to go into the test. So the cd command can be used to go to change the working directory, to go to another directory. Let's say I want to go into test. If I just type in te, and I'm lazy so I'm just going to type in tab right now, and as you can see it automatically finished the directory because there is no other directory that starts with te. It's just going to take me to the test, and as you can see now I am in test. Another useful command right here is pwd and that shows you the current working directory, as you can see now I'm in root test. Now, if I want to go back I can just do cd again change directory and instead of typing a directory name that I want to go to, I'm just going to type in dot dot, and that will just bring me back to where I was which is in root. So I went back from root test to just root. Another useful command is clear, just clear everything and everything is gone now from screen. These were very very basic commands, there is so many commands. Again, every program you install on the system will be installed as will have a command prompt version. So you can access that program through the command prompt. A lot of programs that we're going to use will not even have a graphical interface, so you have to use them through the terminal. Again, don't be scared of that, we're going to use it in the future at this series. I just want to give you an overview of how the terminal works. How you can deal with that, how you write the commands and what shows up in screen just to get you more comfortable with these structures, how you go into directories, leave directories, and all that. I don't want to make this too long, as we learn in the future I'll be talking about features and everything I do. I'll be explaining it so don't worry about it, it's gonna be very easy. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in this episode. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be kept updated to the latest ethical hacking series. Thank you so much once again for watching. On to the next one. Peace.